Notion is not the easiest app to get your head around when you first start using it. In this video, I'm going to go over all of the basic blocks and all of the basic properties you can put in a database, and we're starting right now. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to walk through straight from the beginning, so you can see I'm creating a new account. This is where if you're a student, you'll use your .ac or .edu account. If you're not, you just put in any other email account. Then you'll be shown the privacy screen where you can read through all of the information and go and continue. And then you get a choice going between yourself or with a team. Now for me in this situation, I'm just gonna go for myself and then I'm going to go straight to Notion. Then you get given a variety of templates that Notion has pre-built. You can clear them or you can keep them in there. You can go through these preset templates and use them for whatever you want and adjust them as you see. The Getting Started page does give you a couple of videos that Notion have made on their YouTube channel explaining a lot of the things around Notion. But instead of walking through these preset templates, I'm actually going to create a new page and just run you through all of the different blocks. So first off, we need to add a title to the page. And then we can add an icon to any individual page. You can choose an emoji. You could use the search bar and find a specific emoji you want to have. You can upload any image from your folder. That could be a business icon. It could be a profile picture. It could be any image from the internet. If you have it saved, you can upload it as long as it doesn't exceed five megabytes if you're on the free plan. And then because every page you can have a cover, you can add a cover and the same process applies. You can go into the gallery option and pick one of the preset gallery options there. You could upload an image again, that five megabyte size because I'm on the free plan. You could use a link from anything online. Or you could actually use some stock images from Unsplash and you can just type in whatever image you'd like to see. So we're going to have a look at tutorial, pick an image. And you can see that is our cover. We can reposition that a little bit if we want to change anything. Now the icon doesn't quite fit with the cover, so I'm just going to remove that icon for now. And you can do the same with the cover. So you can see this is the page I'm going to work on, but if you did want to use any of the preset templates that Notion have made, you can see in the sidebar menu, they have a list of all the templates you can use. You can then find the template, use this template, and it will input it into your workspace. So you don't have to create your own workspace, but I personally would suggest understanding how the blocks work. Then as you can see in the sidebar, if you toggle the triangle, it actually shows you what is inside that page. So Notion works on a block basis. Essentially, every time you put anything into Notion, it is a block. If you use the slash command, it brings up the menu of all the different blocks you can have. So we can click on text and you can see this block. So when you click on the six dots to the left, it will highlight that block. This block is a text block. So you can type whatever you wanted in there, type as many words as you want. And if you push enter, it then creates a second text block. So now you've got the first text block and the second text block. Both of them are individual blocks. You could change one of those blocks into something else. So we'll use a page. So you can see now we have our dashboard page and the untitled page we just created. And now we have a text block inside of that brand new page. You can see as we go into the sidebar menu, we have that dashboard and now we have that page inside the dashboard shown as a hierarchy. And when we go into the dashboard, you can see that text block is now shown as a page with the title of the page there and the icon on the left of that title. Now, when we go down to that text block, you can see we still have all of those options. And this is a text block, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And when we type some text in, we can change the color of the text or the color of the block. If I add color to the block, you can see the whole block is now turned with that color. Or I could change the text color of that whole block. So you can see now all of the text is blue, but that highlighted background has now disappeared. If you wanted the background to stay blue, but highlight the text, you can change the background to blue. Then when you go into the text block, you then get your typical options with text. So you could change that text block into something else, but that's not what we're looking for. But you can bold it, 
italic strike through you can mark it as code which for this tutorial we really won't need you can add a link which would be a hyperlink create an equation which again for this tutorial we, you won't really need and then you can change the text color so you could change the text color specifically for whatever you've highlighted so we're going to change the text color to blue now we have text as blue text and we have the block as blue highlighted we can now change that block highlight but the text color will stay the same we could change it and just highlight that bit of text then when we carry on writing it will keep that highlight but we can get rid of the highlight for the bits we don't want and you can see now we just have text highlighted so if you have long paragraphs you can highlight specific parts of that paragraph in whatever color or maybe change the color of that specific text but again all of that is still in that one text block if you go to the side menu you can then change that text block into a heading block heading one two or three heading one being the biggest heading heading two being the middle heading and heading three being the smallest heading all of the highlighting and the text color changes still stay the same even though it's a heading block and because notion works on blocks you can change any block into something else so previously we changed a text block into a heading block now i've changed the heading block into a page and i can change the page into text now you can see when i click on turn into page that is now a page by itself so as we look to the side on the sidebar you can see turn into page is now a page and that page that we did originally have is now text so it's not its own page any individual page can have numerous different blocks in it so we can use that slash command and start adding in different blocks the to-do list block is a tick box where you can just write a list of things click the tick box and it will cross it out you can add a bullet point list and push and enter just keeps that list going you could have a number list and the same principle applies as you enter the list will just carry on you could also use a toggle block which is actually a really useful tool in notion because what it allows you to do is put lots of information in the toggle block and then toggle it shut so as you click on that arrow it'll hide all of the information in the block when you don't want to see it you can put any block inside of a toggle so if we highlight those four blocks the numbered list and the bullet list and drop it into the toggle you can now see those five different blocks are now inside the one toggle block notion also allows you to click and drag between the sidebar so if i take these to do blocks and i want them in the dashboard i can drag and drop them into the dashboard and now you can see those to do blocks are now in the dashboard rather than that turn into page when writing information maybe you have a quote that you want to be able to highlight so when you're looking back on it you can see that when you go into the slash command menu you can see quote you can enter that in and it will put a black solid line on the left side of your quote if you wanted to separate anything in one page you could use a divider which inserts a small thin line that will separate those blocks one of the great features about notion is you can link other pages into the same page Previously we've created a page in the dashboard from here, but what I'm going to do is look in the sidebar, you can see we've got the weekly agenda template that Notion automatically gave us, and I'm going to link that page into our dashboard page. So you can see, now I can see that weekly agenda from my dashboard without having to go to the sidebar. The arrow indicates that it's not the original page, it's just a link to go to that page. Another way to call out information that you may want to keep note of when looking at your page is the callout block. Essentially this is a text block that automatically has a background color to it, but it also allows you to put any sort of emoji or image next to it. So we can search up an emoji or an image or anything like that and put that next to that callout. The same rules apply to the callout block as the text block, you can change the background, you can change the text. It's entirely up to your preference and your use case. Now if we wanted to delete any of those blocks we can just highlight all of the blocks and then push the delete key on our keyboard and then they will all go. So anything inside of a block is easily movable and deletable. Now moving on to the inline blocks in Notion. 
If you are working with a team or you're sharing your workspace with someone, you can mention them in a block and that will give that person a notification that they need to go have a look at wherever you've mentioned them. Alternatively, you could mention a page, which is very similar to the link page block that I've just spoken about, but this one you can do with an at mention. Essentially, they do the same thing, but they look different. Now, if we were to click on that block and drag it around, you can see if there's a thin blue line, that's where it will move it to. If it highlights the block, then it means that you're dragging it into that page. I'm going to drag it all the way to the side where you can see the thin blue line and I'm going to drop it there. And now we've just organized those blocks next to one another. Another inline block you can use is the reminder. So you can set a reminder for any date or time that you want. Once you've set that reminder, you can then click on it and change it as much as you want because you get the pop-up menu. Essentially, you can change the date, change the year, change the time, add an end date, move everything around. Maybe you want to change the format, change the hours, make it relative, change the time zone. Or you might want to add an actual reminder on there so you get a push notification on your phone or in the Notion workspace. And if you did want to change anything, you can just click on it and go and change it. You can see it's now gone red because that reminder has actually passed, so I should have already been reminded about doing this thing. And again, this reminder is a block, so you can click and drag it anywhere else. Because we have two blocks next to one another, I've actually created two columns. So if I push Ctrl A, you can see all of the different blocks I have on this page. You can see I've got the two blocks at the top, I have the three on the left and the two on the right, with the column in between. I can make them smaller, bigger, move anything around to fit how I want. If I want to drag that block outside of that column, I can just drag it until I see the big blue line and then it will come outside of those two columns. And the same thing, because they're all blocks, you can just highlight them all and delete them. And then the last two blocks are the emoji inlines and the equation inlines, which essentially just allow you to put emojis and math equations into Notion. Now when we scroll down to media, you can see all the different media options. But you don't have to scroll all the way down, you can start typing in after the slash if you know what you're looking for. So I'm going to go slash, image, and you can see it pops up. Now with an image, essentially it works the same as a cover. You can upload an image or you could find an image from Unsplash. Once you've selected that image, you'll see the image in the page, and the image is its own block. You could then add a comment, so if there are other people in the page, you can mention them from here. You can add a caption to the image, which will actually add a caption in the image block, rather than it being a separate block. So you can see as I write the caption, it's slightly grey and right underneath the text block. So when I select the block, you can see the text is highlighted. If I was to manually add a caption down below, it would be a text block, so you'll see it's black writing and it's not highlighted as a block. You can view the image originally, which brings it up in a different window. You could also do something similar when going into the menu and selecting the image full screen. But when you're in Notion, you can adjust the size of the image, making it smaller or larger. You can see there's that text caption, so we're going to get rid of that. But it automatically centers the image, so you can use a text block to create two columns, which will push that image to either the left or the right, depending on where you put the block. Now I'm going to make this page a little bit bigger so you can see the full width. I'm also going to hide the sidebar just to clear it up a bit. And now you can see the image is aligned to the left because we have that text block to the right. I'm just going to change where the column starts a bit by clicking and dragging that bar across. And now I can start writing in that text block which is next to the image block in a different column. I could then make a third column by adding in a text block and dragging that across. Now you can see we've got three columns and I can adjust the size of all three. And you can see, if I push Ctrl A, you can see all of the different blocks we currently have. But I don't actually want those columns, so I'm going to highlight those text blocks and delete them, and now the page is going to center. If you drag that image all the way out to the side, it actually turns into a banner. It will still have the caption down below it, and you can make it bigger or smaller, but this is one way to design your Notion page. You could split up an image, have it as a top banner, have it split in the middle, and then have it split at the bottom. There's loads of different design ideas you can have with images. The video works exactly the same as the image, except you can push on the video to play the video. With the web bookmark, essentially what you can do is take any URL, whether that's an email, a website, an article, and you can put it into Notion. 
and the bookmark will give you a display, a small reminder about where that link is going. If you were to paste the URL into Notion natively, you could dismiss it and just see the URL. You could create a bookmark and you can embed some things, but for this link, it's just gonna give me a bookmark because you can't embed Google into Notion. And again, this bookmark is a separate block, so you can do the same thing. You can change it into something else or you can just click, drag and delete it. That pretty much covers all of the basic blocks and most use cases that you'll have, and there are some embeds that you may want to use in Notion and some advanced blocks, but we'll leave those for another tutorial. Now I'm going to go over databases and the basic properties of databases. So you can see when we create a database, it could be inline or full. If it's a full database, essentially you have a page that is just a database. You can't add any blocks in this page because it's just a database. So you can't add any text blocks, any to-do list blocks below it or above it because it's just the database. You can change the views of the database. You could have a table view and see all of the columns and rows. You could have a calendar view that will be a continuous calendar all the way down. You could have a board view that's very similar to the Trello style Kanban board where you can drag tiles across. You could have a list view, which is a little bit more minimalistic, but you can choose what you want to see in this view, nice and condensed. And then there is a gallery view that you can use for images, cover photos, and other specific pieces of information. One of the best features in Notion is even though it's a database, you can still link that database to other places, very similar like you can do with pages. So if we use the slash command and create a linked database, now essentially we're viewing the database from a different place and whatever we change in this view will change in the original view. So you can see we've added testing in the second database but the original database now has testing in it. You can link the same database numerous different times for different views, for different dashboards, for different places. It's entirely up to you and your creativity. Now each row in the database and each tile in any other view is its own page. Now when you open up this page, it's just like any other page that you would have in Notion except it has properties to identify where the page should be in the database. You can see we still have the blocks where you can add all of the different things in there. And if we open this up as a page, it just looks like a normal Notion page, but it has the properties at the top. You can see when we look at the breadcrumb as to where we are, we are in the dashboard page and the database and we are in the testing page. If we go back to the dashboard, you can see testing is the name of the page and the icon to the left is the icon of the page. So if we go into that page, add an emoji, you can see the icon will change in the database. Now the columns you can see in the table are the properties you can see in the page. So you can see we've got tags, files, and date. If you go into the page, you can then change those properties. So if we add a date to testing, you can see we've now got the date in there. But if we add two other rows, which are two new pages into the database, they have their own properties because it's their own information. So we can add specific dates to each row in the database because each row is its own page and has its own identity. Now there are lots of different types of properties and lots of different ways to use properties together, but I'm gonna go over the basic properties that you'll probably be using. Firstly, you've got the text property, which essentially means you can write whatever you want in that box. If you go over to the side of the table, you can wrap that text or unwrap the text so you can see everything in the box or just keep it nice and clean with one line. You can have a number property which won't allow you to put any letters in there because when you go into that number property, you can change it to have commas in or you can change it to pounds, dollars, euros or format those numbers in different ways. And again, because this is a property, each row will have its own number. The reason this can be useful is when you go to the bottom of the table, you get options. And because it's a number property, you can see we have sum, range, max, min, median, all of those different options, and it will automatically add that up for you. And as you change those numbers, the sum at the bottom of the table will change as well. The options at the bottom of the column will change depending on what property is in that column. So you can see we've just got the empty, 
Then in the date we can choose the earliest date, and for the name we can just count how many there are. These options will all change depending on what property you have in the table. Moving on we have a select property which is essentially a drop down menu and you can choose what's in that drop down menu. So maybe this is used as a task database, you could have to do, working and done as different options. And as you type those in you can push enter or you can click on them. Now when you go into any of those pages you can select which one that it's related to. You can drag them around in order, change the name, change the colour, all to your own preference. Very similar to the select property is the multi-select and as it suggests, multi-select allows you to select more than one thing at a time. So you could have something in to do, working and done, you could have something in just to do or working and done. This property might be more useful when you're thinking about people, you might apply it to one or two different people. If however those people are in your workspace, you can use the person property and then you can just tag that person into the property of the page. If there is a specific file or something that you want to link to a specific project or task or row in the database, you can add that in as a file property and the same rules apply when adding in an image or a banner, you are limited to the 5 megabytes upload. Another basic property you can use in a database is the tick box. It's very similar to the to do block that you can put in a page and it works exactly the same but it's specific to whatever row that tick box is on. You can rename the columns whatever you want. You could use an emoji in there instead by using the Windows plus key and if you're on Mac it is on screen now. A phone property where if you have the number in there you can go to the phone and then call them on Skype or something like that. The email property which will allow you to send an email from there if you have the email address incorrectly, it will input it straight into your email. And then you have a URL property, so instead of creating a bookmark inside the page, you could just have it in the properties so you don't have to go into the page to get to the link. As you may be able to imagine, as you start to put more information in the table and not the page, it does start to bulk out. But if you go into the menus and select properties, you can actually choose what properties you want to see, so you can just select the needed information for that view. In this case, I only want to see the day and to see if I've done something. Because this is a database, I can actually add filters to those properties. So if we go to add a filter, we tick that box, and we go into the options, you can see all of those properties we've just created. Each of those properties will allow us different filters and for the checkbox we can check to see if it is or is not checked. And that filter will then reflect what's being shown in the database. You can also sort the information in the exact same way by selecting which property you want to sort by and then choosing what option that it gives you. What this means is you can create different views of the same database with different filters and sorts for the information you want to see. Now when we go into the page we can change the information from the page and it will change in the database because it's exactly the same. So you can see I've unticked test 2 and now it's reflected in that database view. If we then go into a different view of the database, so we choose that board view, you can see the titles have changed. What it's done is it's taken the select property that we created with working done and to do and put them as titles and then we have all of those rows as different tiles in the board view. We still have the same options to filter and sort, but because this is a board view we can group the board by different things. So we could group it by a select property, by a multi-select property, or by a person property. If it's sorted by a multi-select property, you could see the same tile more than once because it's shown in more than one area. So you can see this tile is all three, so it's being shown in all three. When you go into the board view you can see a number at the top of the board and what essentially that number represents is up to you. You can select that number and choose what information you want it to show you and you can pick from any of those properties that you've created. 
Now, when we go into the calendar view, essentially it's the same database with the same information, the same pages and the same properties. But this view will show you the information in a calendar view specific to the date. So whatever the date property is for the page, that is where it will show in the calendar. And as you drag the tile across, the date will change. You can see if we go to the top, if there isn't a date on a tile, you can push to view that tile and then it will automatically add today's date in. Maybe you want to have more than one date on a specific task. Maybe you need to review the task or review the project afterwards. You can have two date properties in that tile. And then when you go into the calendar view, you can choose calendar by and then select that second date. And now the calendar will be sorted for that second date rather than the first one. And you can see now we've got those other two dates that don't have a review date in there yet. And you can click on view and they will both be given a today review date. So if we enter the page, you can see we've got the original date and the new review date. Now moving down to the list view, again, it's the same database, same information, same properties, and we can filter and sort exactly the same way. So if we add some of those properties in, you can see them in the list view next to whatever page it's related to. But what you can actually do, every single database allows you to search for specific information. So if you go to that search bar and start typing in something, it will search the name of the page. So if we type in test, all three pages have test in there. But if we go space and two, it will only show me test two. So if your database has loads of information and you're looking for something in specific, then just search for the name of that specific page. And it will work in the table view, board view, calendar view, list view, the search is the same. Moving on to the gallery view, again, all the information is the same, but it shows an image instead. So if we go into the properties, you can actually see some added bits at the top. You can see card review, and you can choose none, page cover, page content, which is what we're currently using, and then files if that's what you wanted. You can then change the size, small, medium, or large. So I'm gonna go small, and then you can fit the image. But before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the page and I'm going to add a cover because that's the setting we've just chosen in the gallery. It's randomly given me a plane, which is pretty cool. I can then reposition that if I really wanted to. But then if I go back into the properties and then I go fit image, you can see it either fits the gallery or it doesn't. It's up to you how you want to see it. And when you select those properties, it will show those properties at the bottom of the view. And again, you can click on that tile and you'll be given access to the page and you can change anything from there. So if we show that tick box in the gallery view, we can then see that that one's ticked and we can tick the box from the gallery view if we wanted to. Something very similar is available in the board view. So when we go to the properties of the board view, you can see that card preview again. So you could preview by cover and you can see there's that plane again because it's the same page, same information, same database. You can change the card size, you can fit the image the same, and that is with the board and the gallery view. If you've managed to stick through this whole tutorial, maybe you're interested to learn a little bit more about Notion, so check out this video over here and I'll see you there.